lead times on the products are such that you know you've you've got to you've got to really be anticipatory as much as you possibly can. Um, the challenge that we have as a as a nation is that so much of our commerce is dependent upon the ceilings and that those international commons that allow trade to happen you know certainly the United States benefits greatly from having that access there and it's incumbent upon us to make sure that we ensure that access. Uh, what does it take to do that? Um, you know back 200 years ago it was wooden ships that it took to do that. Uh, today it is it's uh, gray navy ships that, that you use to do that and um, and naval aviation has been a big part of that uh, and uh, submarines have been a big part of that. And so now the, the, the piece that we're working on, and Chris is, is central to this, is, um, you know, what's next? What's next for the U.S. Navy? To your question earlier, um, what's the Navy look like going forward? How is the 30-year plan that they put together? How do we support that? What are the key decisions that have to happen in the next, uh, in the next three to five years to support the long-term uh, uh, value and, and uh, horizon of, of where the Navy's going? Uh, if you list the 20 things that have to happen over the next 10 years for this company, uh, the vast majority of them are U.S. Navy things. Um, so we are the largest supplier of the U.S. Navy ship surface combatants in the country. We provide over 70% of the Navy's current surface combatant fleet. Uh, I talked about the four classes of ships. You know, something that maybe not really is appreciated, you need the talent in production, but you also need the engineering talent and staff to do the designs, to do the modifications to the ships, and to translate that into the yard. We have a very capable engineering department, uh, about a thousand engineers and designers, and we have completed three significant design projects over the last 10 years, from either major ship alterations to new ship designs. And I think that also is, is kind of unique from other non-nuclear yards. Uh, eight, 18 different crafts, 13% of our workforce is veterans. We have a, a program where we really recruit veterans. Um, and we're very proud of that. And we have over 300 master ship builders. Those are ship builders that have over 40 years experience. So they really help train the, the next generations of ship builders. Um, facilities. We're under a project now we call the Shipyard of the Future. And when I take you through the yard, I'll show kind of the areas that we're um, focused on. But it's really focused on delivering the most capable ship platform at the lowest possible value, lowest possible cost, and to really enable our workforce to be all they can be.